Hello, and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today, I'm going to do a little bit more detailed watercolor painting, um, utilizing more colors and also using some white gouache. Uh, it's about an 8 by 10 cut of Stonehenge Legion. It's not toned, and I coated it with water prior to starting the video. I spritz my palette with some water. I'm gonna jump into it. This has been more experimental for me. So there'll be times where I probably don't talk as much or say what I'm doing as it might be more exploratory. I'll try to mention the colors as I get them out. And in this case, I have some raw sienna. I wanna place on that paper. I don't have a picture to reference. In this case, it's going to be more imaginary. I'm grabbing some ultramarine blue. I think that I'm going to put a group of trees right in this region. And we'll get an idea of what we want. Uh, what I'm doing here is just stretching out the paper. I just lift up the binder clip and I push it down here. Sometimes you get a mark from the back of it if you have a dirty hake brush or brush in general, but it's better than the oil from your fingers because that will create a um, area of resistance from oil and um, maybe uh, skin products. All right, so how do we want this to go? mix a little bit of light red oxide. My pigments are a little um, essentially kind of contaminated from the white gouache, um, meaning that the last time I painted I had some white gouache that I was mixing in. And you can see the initial where it messed it up. Now I could just go in and wipe that off if I wanted to uh, with a paper towel or at the end of a painting session, but I did not do that, so I'm just letting you know what could happen. It really isn't the end of the world, but it's why I usually do white wash on a separate container. Using light red and ultramarine for a dark purple, a distant purple. I think maybe we'll have a row of fields leading up group of trees right here. Some strong raw sienna. Just warming up this area, just bringing it forward. I can even grab some burnt sienna. The palette that I use is still pretty restrictive once I start using colors. Um, it's the sienna's um, yellow ochre. The opacity of it really helps out later on, I think. And my umbers, the oxides, ultramarine and, and black. I do have sap green as a convenience. But, okay, I'm gonna grab a dark. And I think this is kind of where some of these videos might grow a little skewed, is that I kind of have some different darks that I just jump towards. Like right now, ultramarine and um, burnt umber. Just mixing that together for a dark. Where I'm just feeding in ultramarine. And sometimes I just grab the black or the paint's gray. Let's see. Being that it's still wet, if I tried putting a tree in in this fashion, it's going to diffuse. So I'm going to take a moment to play with some texture with the paper towel and see how I want this to develop. Pulling out some water, giving some texture. Just getting ideas. Okay, 
Now, um, usually I would just stay with one Hake brush, but I'm gonna grab a second one. It's not as crazy of a brush. It hasn't been that worn in. I think honestly a more worn in one here would be beneficial, but I wanna grab some raw umber, sorry, raw sienna, and stipple that in. It's still damp in those spots, so it should diffuse, but I wanna build a glow around uh, for foliage. This is a technique that I used to use a lot, wet and wet, when I'd use more color. And that the burnt uh, sienna gives that kind of glow of the light folding around it. And I think the diffusion, the softening of it will help out as well. Still just building up ideas. All right. Here's some raw umber, just so you can kind of compare. This is a more cooler color. I always think of it as kind of a green. And I'm going to move very quickly over to the number one and the number four. These guys, I like to put wet and wet some ideas of trunks and branches. Now, honestly, this is where I get into that mixing darks that it's just kind of random. Like here, I'm just grabbing some Payne's Gray and some burnt umber just to make kind of any old dark. The idea being um, Carlson's Guide to Landscape Painting that in general, using three tones, three, three values, your vertical structures, your trees, especially their trunks, would be the darkest object. The uh, land would be the second darkest because it's um, being shine, uh, getting more light, the angle that it's in reference to. And then the brightest or the least dark value would be the sky, the source of the light. Though in his book, every example is in black and white, I believe, and it's um, usually snow paintings. So that kind of makes following that basic instruction kind of difficult. All right. Also in other news, so the house we placed an offer on was accepted. Um, we had the inspection it went great so now i think it's just finishing up stuff with the bank the bank doing the appraisal then the closing date so that's gonna be really exciting i want to get some more videos filmed so i have them all rolling out while we're doing that let's grab a little bit of red light red oxide hey man we're not calling you in there bud I know you want to, but we're not. So, that's what's going on. Let's grab a little bit of black. I want it darker, more towards the middle. Some raw sienna. You also grab some of the lemon yellow into that mix, but the lemon yellow is kind of all muddied up on the palette. Let's look for just some dark trees in the background.
pops off. All right, I'm gonna grab, I'll stay with the number one for right now. So here, I try to mix more pigment, so stronger pigment. This is a Payne's Gray Burnt Umber combination again. I'm gonna lower where I'm starting. See, I'm kind of drawing a line just so you can see where. And these trees, just using those two ideas to push them forward in the picture plane. So that's what I do to, for me, create a scene. It may wind up getting covered up, but it helps me kind of build up those areas where if I was just laying in individual areas, um, for me, it just wouldn't make sense. Now, if you want to follow along, you're always welcome to do that. You have my express permission to sign your own name and to sell or give away anything you do when you follow along. I want you guys to have fun and have money for art supplies. Um, if you like this channel, please like, subscribe, and follow. And I have the Patreon down below if you want to support there. And thank you to everybody that supports through the Patreon. I use that money to get more art supplies and film more videos. And is there anything else I want to add? Yeah, so there's exclusive videos there. And thank you to everybody that supports. I also have the Etsy and uh, the book of the coffee table book of my work that I put out. All right. Grab some Payne's Gray. I'm going to go with some raw umber. Darkening the interior of this group of trees. And if you want, you could take the paper towel. Good. See what wipes back. We can grab a scraping tool, which I'm going to pause my camera to look for. And I'm taking this card, taking the flat side, and I'm putting it on an angle so I can adjust the width that I want to scrape. So you can see that changing there. If I use the rounded edge, we're still at that damp point where it looks like we're getting some backfills. Meaning that if I use the sharp edge, it's just going to fill in. It's going to damage the paper and the pigment's going to go into those spots, which is fine. Um, just be wary of the tonal value that can take place, especially when we have a uh, value shift happen when we dry. some textures in here. I think that's the way I want that. I'm going to, let's see, let's grab the number four. Have some burnt sienna, mix it into that Payne's Gray Ultramarine mix. Starting lower, it's going thicker. I'm getting ideas. I think now we'd benefit from pausing and drying off. Okay, so did the dry off. Um, you could see that the backfills are more pronounced. 
because of the tonal shift of everything around it. And let us see what we want to do next. I think I want to accent these guys. So just grabbing some pigment, darkening up one side, just having my light come from this region. I can also put in some twigs and branches. I'm try not trying to pass over pre-existing twigs. I'm just going with the softer diffused ones that we did. These ones will be more pronounced. And then we have the scrapes. And my goal is just to have those build up to create a 3D depth. There. All right. So I didn't clean off the hakes. I, I never do during a painting. So I'm just taking what's ever on there and building up the foliage down below it. some crisper areas. Hey, Amy. What's up, bud? All right. All right, let's see. I'm going to grab the number four. Hey, Amy, you can't stick your claws at me, bud. Especially after crying. I know, bud. Let me all right, let me pick Hammy up. All right, Hammy is getting into my lap. He's in my lap. Now, unfortunately, at the start of part of the video painting phase is when I have one arm around Hammy. You can see that right there. And I'm painting with the other hand. So I start losing the ability to wipe and swipe as I do this, but in a few minutes, Hammy will get down. All right, here's a darker mix. I'm starting off lower than the previous ones behind it. And this is to, once again, create a sense of depth and utilize atmospheric perspective and just using my uh, tonal values to push it forward. So linear, atmospheric, I'm going with those two. A little dry brushing on the side. You want to watch Hammy? You're pouring. Hammy hasn't been sleeping with me at night. What's up with that, bud? Usually he would sleep on my legs, but he hasn't lately. I'm really excited for them to see the new house and to be in the new house. I'm sure the first day getting him there, his eyes are going to be super wide and, and flying all over. All right, grabbing the hake. Now, I think that I want to use some phthalo blue. You mix this with your earth pigments, you'll start to get some interesting greens. And they feel like very natural greens, especially since it's weird because phthalo blue is just not that natural looking to me in and of itself. So you can see the greens that are coming through now. If I go down the line of earth pigments, mixed into that, and I'll get a darker. This is the burnt sienna mixed into it. I'm trying to vary my pattern that's taking place. If I mix the umbers into it, should get even darker. 
Try not to pass exactly over the background. I want variety. Hey, bud. I love you too, Hammy. I'm going to scrape into this. You get ideas of movement happening. If we take a paper towel, we can push some stuff back. And now, start going for even darker dark. For even closer tree trunks. Okay, I'm gonna pause the camera and hit it with the blow dryer. Okay, hit me for all these. Okay, now here's one thing I play around with. I grab a squirrel mop. Oh, bud, you can't push it. You can't push the painting, bud. Grab a squirrel mop. You can grab a round brush, anything like that. Even the hake brush. I try to get some clean yellow, lemon yellow. It's a little dirty still, but that's fine. Brighten that up. You can grab some Payne's Gray Ultramarine combo. Scraping with the back of the handle. A wash of burnt sienna. Kind of glazing over this, getting Hammy's fur out of it. I know that if I fiddle too much here, when I do the glazing, it will start causing um, some issues on the under layers. So just kind of go in quick. All right, I can't get hammy. There it is. Nope. I'll grab a ultramarine wash. Probably gonna grab some lemon yellow. Yellow ochre just to see. So this is where it's experimental for me. Ultramarine. Okay, so that feels like it gives more of a unified um, kind of a life to it. I'm gonna pause again and dry it off. Okay. So, after a quick hit with the blow dryer, some areas are still wet, but I'm not too concerned. I put out some white gouache, and I put out some black gouache. Here's the logic at this point. Um, with the white gouache, it lets me work in reverse now and lighten some areas. Um, with watercolor, there's people that um, really don't like white gouache. What that stems from is historically, uh, critics during the Victorian era, when everybody was watercoloring, and I think handprint.com described that as its highest peak with watercolor. Then I also have the black gouache out, 
in order to accentuate darks. Where if I was to take the white as a body color and I'd mix black into it, I would start getting grays and I'm inherently starting to have trouble with getting those darks down. So the black gouache, that's what this is gonna be right here, tinted with some sap green is my logic. This is what I started experimenting with in the last painting video. And that one is up on Patreon as an exclusive. The pure white by itself is I think too much. So it always kind of mixed with something helps out. Putting down some um, white gouache just by itself is fine. And it allows you to pass over that area with a color as well. So kind of like glazing a color over the white gouache to tint it, or you're also free to experiment with um, mixing them together and then putting it down. Now this, let's see, just grabbing some earth colors, like raw umber into a burnt sienna to create more of an opaque branch that can sit in front. Percy, I know you want in my lap so you can get up here and start walking on my painting. All right, so I got Percy now. All right, nope, you gotta sit down, baby. Switch to the number one. Now, before I started filming this, I took out my previous painting outside and I hit it with um, some archival varnish gloss. I want to see how that brings um, the colors forward. Some white gouache. say that this is where the kind of fiddling starts taking place. I'm trying not to create too uniform of a color of a line. I want to mix things up rather than just have a straight line of color. Build up textures. No, Percy, you can't climb up. Say hi to everybody. There you go. Percy's saying hi. Or they're back. There's their face. <laughs> All right. Let's see. I'm trying to grab more pigment, so I'm gonna mix the number one, sorry, the number four rigger. So we can lay down some more. Let's see if we can grab some of this sap green. Of course, grab the hate brush to start building up the foliage. Oh, you jump right up, Percy. All right, a white wash, a little bit of a lemon yellow. So, the goal is to get these to push forward. So the gouache that I'm using is Da Vinci brand. Now, I really love Da Vinci brand, um, but the white gouache isn't the most opaque, but <laughs> gouache is kind of really expensive. So uh, the, the their gouache isn't as expensive as other brands. Um, I think it would be up to you with what you would want to go with. Mind of Watercolor has a really good 
video comparing them from a few years back, exploring the opacity of each. I try to keep the opacity out of the background. But we might want to explore later on. I'm taking a wash of that mix that's just on my palette. Some lemon yellow on top of that. And of course, what I just put down isn't dry yet, so I have to be wary of pushing things around. A little bit of a light red in that mix. Lift it up some. Okay. <laughs> Guys, be nice. Okay, I'm starting to get a good vibe going. I'm going to do a quick dry off. All right. I'm really enjoying the overall feel. I do feel like there's a lot that I need to push with this. So what I'm going to do is grab the squirrel mop, mixing up some sap green into a light wash like that. that over and getting more life. I think a wash of um, raw sienna would be fine. You could dap it, put some textures in. I'm going to pause again. I'm going to look at my next layer of trees. Yeah. Now I want to explore a truly like gouached and experimented on tree. So I'm going to start that tree here. So I have a mixture of white gouache. some more give that some life look for some roots popping up it's kind of like painting this silhouette of a tree All right, now, I think I'm pretty happy with how that's looking, so I'm gonna pause this. I hit it with the blow dryer. It's still a little damp, but that's fine. I'm gonna grab my smaller brushes. And first, I do some, let's do ultramarine and burnt umber, and we'll start in some darker aspects try not to have a super perfectly mixed grab some other darks to mix in while I'm doing this looking for where my shadows would be wanting to essentially 
start that 3D effect. Here's some black wash. I really don't think the um, black mixed with the white directly is very appealing. You kind of get that gray, and that's when you start kind of losing that, that life of it. And I think that's what people complain about when they do use blacks and whites. And there's something about an opaque object over a more translucent one that makes these effects interesting. Once again, just tr not trying to get the same color throughout, varying it, looking for other marks. Now, if you notice, I'm kind of like jerky with my hand. Um, that's just kind of random, trying to achieve organic, natural effects. Let the white gouache mix in. Black gouache. Now, it's not dry, but I'm going to just use this time to put some foliage in. And here is where you can use the hake and some white gouache with, um, I'm going to see what color I'd want. Let's go with the yellow ochre just to use its opacity and see how that looks. Having a more frayed part helps prevent that double stamp that happened from a different part. You can spray it, help spread them out if you kind of just hit it with a brush, with a towel. I got a little bit of lamp, um, black on there, but that's fine. Okay, got the number one, the gouache, and kind of like a branch color. I'm looking for my burnt sienna and ultramarine. It's not really popping forward, so let me grab some black. If you go and draw a tree from life, we're in Louisiana is when we're, we're getting our growth now. This is um, almost um, April, but in other areas you can really see a lot of the dead trees still. And look and see how many branches there really are, because there is there is a lot. I like to create other growths by the base of the tree. It just kind of seems natural for me. Also, people mowing. That's a, that's the last place people get. So, I've been playing with the idea of kind of cross hashing essentially with this brush, meaning there's a hatch, there's a hatch to give the illusion of many branches, but I don't feel like I have the right pattern down yet. And where that comes from, for me experimentation wise, is that I saw some, I think it might've been an olive, 
uh, grove or forest or something from Van Gogh. It was a drawing and he used those cross hatches in a very effective way to give the illusion of uh, branches and foliage. Some stronger black. Because everything's going to grow out and it's going to try to. Uh, take over. So that's my mentality with how I'm making these motions. But I am going to pause this and hit with the blow dryer. All right, so what I was thinking while just hitting with the blow dryer is uh, two things taking some water, getting some light washes. and placing those over different spots, which I'll then come in and play with the white gouache and stippling some foliage. The other thing is, nope, that's way too much. What was the other, oh, see how that caught that white and spread it around? What was the other thing? that a lot of what we initially did to build up the scene is gone. But I feel like for me, that's necessary to create the scene. However, I think that eventually there'd be a way to kind of block in what I would want and then go from there. So that was still just way too wet. Which, it's whatever. We're still exploring and learning. So I'm gonna do the dry off now. I think that would probably be one of our last washes like that. All right, so I'm gonna, do I have a bristle brush? Yes, I do. I'm gonna play with the bristle brush for texture and we are 45 minutes in, so I'm gonna start trying to wrap some of this up. But you know, at the end of the day, this is exploratory and just trying a different approach. It is yielding some interesting effects. We can see that passing it over this white gouache has just um, caused some issues. Now, I did order a book on Victorian watercolors. It should come in soon. I ordered it off of Amazon. I'm curious to see what, if any, information it has. But some of the things out of that time period, and this is referencing uh, handprint.com, um, David Dunlap, and conversations with Joe Menza where they would cover the paper with Chinese white, which I think is just zinc white. And that's what um, Windsor Newton had called it when they came out with that. All right, looking for mixes with the white wash and seeing what we can get to push forward. They also had some very heavily sized paper. I think that's as per David Dunlap, a video that he had on Turner's approach, or I think he even varnished the paper. I'm 
curious. Let's see what we can scrape and move around. Kind of break up any solid masses that just seem too big. One of the issues is as it just kind of gets in there and really starts to soak into the paper, you lose that intensity. Or as the water evaporates out. to this with some strong gouache. You see how it's the same U and value that I'm using, so I'm trying to switch it up into the mixes with whatever's on my palette. I was about to wrap this one up. I'll show you the one that I varnished. Let's see if I could stipple in or stab in some. Um, Colorful gouache. So I just kind of stab the paper like this, holding it upright and just pop up pop. In fact, I have my finger resting on the paper to do this. I believe this is the Chinese dot method used for foliage or for um, trees on a mountain or moss. Okay, let's pause this. Now here is something that I tried in a previous, I just need to find the squirrel, there we go. And just the concept here is pretty basic. Just taking a black or a Payne's gray wash with the squirrel mop and darkening areas in order to make it brighter and others. So I'm going on the other side of that tree trunk. So I want that to pop forward. Darken that up, last minute change. All right, and then the last, go. You 
using the bristle brush. I think I want this much darker in here. Let's try the phthalo blue. Phthalo blue with um, raw umber. And honestly, it's just really all about experimenting. Um, if you are worried about worrying the uh, ruining the painting, just think how often you paint and how big of a pile of paintings that you have. So use this to experiment. And that's the only way to grow and see what's working for you. And honestly, if you wanted to then experiment with on top of that black, you grab some more peg. And there we go. We have some stuff coming out from the right side of the picture, creating that. I did put out some pure white gouache. I just wanted to see how that would accentuate it. Like I said, it's all about experimenting. So it's gonna come out forward compared to the one behind it. So the little twigs that come off of those branches. Also see if we can grab some more umber. So I hope at this point you all kind of get the idea of what I'm experimenting with. And I do have to do a lot of these off camera to, to practice and to explore, but I wanted to put some videos out before we uh, really start packing up to move. So I don't want just the branches by themselves. So I dried it off and I signed it. I want to show you what um, one looks like varnished, how it really helps the depth in it. It is gloss, so you can see the sheen that it takes on. But I do feel like it dries a little too soft and too um, matte or dull. I think that that is the next thing to explore, just see how far I can go with the varnishing. So, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, once again, please like, subscribe, follow, and um, thank you for watching. You all take care. Have a great day.